Now, regular viewers of my little channel might remember that uh, I might have said that I would not buy any of these um, boat anchors anymore. And, uh, well, I lied. I must have bought hundreds of these over the years and I know exactly what to look out for before I hand over any cash. These uh, transceivers to this day are still very desirable and they do the job nicely if you happen to get a good one. Um, expect to pay anything between 100 and 200 pounds. I would not pay any more. After all, they are 40 years old. Um, yeah, let me show you what I learned over the years. For the purpose of this video, we stick with the FD-101ZD and uh, most of the points I'm trying to make can also be applied to the FD-902 or many, many other uh, vintage transceivers. Stating the obvious, make sure that all the knobs are there and the front panel is not scratched. You might not have any power available, so you won't be able to check the frequency display or if the S-meter bulbs are still working. But what you can check is if the VFO is running smoothly, if all the controls, uh, you know, uh, run as they should, and if the switches all latch as they should. Needless to say that you should make sure that the, the case has no dents and um, comes in the original color. Uh, make sure it has no scratches. If there are any dents, I would just walk away um, and not bother anymore. Make sure that all the screws are original. These little ones here, the grey ones, make sure they are not uh, overly used. And uh, right from the back I can see this is a replacement screw. So at one point this transceiver has been opened, but I know that already because the seller was honest enough about it. Uh, this is the original handle made out of leather. The stitching wasn't very good, so um, if these transceivers were carried around a lot, uh, the stitching would just um, break and uh, become frail. Um, if you see this, then you can assume that this has been used portable many, many occasions, and uh, the same rule as for a dental um, case applies. Walk away right away. Pay some attention to the bottom as well. Check out the feet. Right from the back, you can see these are the round feet. Feet They are not original. The original ones are pointy at the front, slightly elevated, and uh, the ones at the, at the back are just flat. So these feet have been changed. Now, there are several reasons why, uh, there are several reasons, um, why people might do this. The main reason, though, is that this transceiver has been dropped from a moderate, moderate height, let's say 10 centimeters, does the job nicely. And then uh, these original Yaeso feet would just burst. Um, I've seen this time and time again. If this transceiver has been shipped and wasn't packed properly, uh, most people leave the feet on and they take all the impact. My top tip um, is when you ship these transceivers, well, first of all, don't ship them if you don't have the original box. And if you do have to ch ship them, take these feet off so um, the load is distributed over the entire surface um, of the transceiver. When you pick one of these up, um, just turn them around and check if there's a slight dent here between the frame and the casing, because this is where the damage occurs. If it has been dropped at any point or handled roughly, then there is a small dent between the frame or the front panel and the casing. Watch out for this. You see this quite, quite often. Moving swiftly to the back of the transceiver, first of all, make sure that the fan is there. Uh, it's an AC fan and it should run smoothly. This one does, I have no concerns, there's no rub marks on it or um, any signs of abuse. Um, then of course you must make sure that it has the 11-pin the, uh, um, uh, accessory plug fitted. It's not just a dummy plug, it also shortens two of the contacts to um, enable the heaters to come on. If you don't have this one and there is no um, bridge inserted here, your heaters will not come on and the rig will not transmit. So um, if you haven't got this uh, plug uh, with the transceiver, it's it's not the end of the world. You can just um, bridge two of these uh, connectors here to make the heaters work. Um, look it up on the internet. I can't remember uh, which ones to shorten. But uh, yeah, some of them also have the uh, DC unit fitted. Uh, this one hasn't. It's a, it's a black box. Uh, don't worry about this. If you don't want to use it mobile or from a DC source, uh, you don't need this op this optional extra fitted at all. Um, here is the power socket. It's a six-pin Jones. So you must make sure that you have 
the original power lead with it. Uh, this is the original power lead. Without it, it's a it can be a headache. Um, they can be converted to a three pin or two pin, but uh, I haven't done this myself. I've seen this done uh, many times before, but um, I don't recommend it. So take a good look at the back panel as well. I have now taken the covers off and um, it's always a bit of a surprise. Well, this is the IF board, frequency counter. Somewhere over there is the crystal board, the crystal oscillator board. This is the HT compartment containing the um, uh, valves, transformer, smoothing capacitors. This is the uh, rectifier B. And uh, this transceiver has the FM board fitted. Moving on to the bottom of the transceiver, this is the AF board and um, right away somebody fitted a plug of some sort, headphones, Kia, I have no idea, I need to investigate further. Uh, this is the rectifier A with a relay that can go dodgy from time to time. Here you can see the uh, bottom of the uh, VFO and this is where the trimmer boards are located. All right, here we have the HD compartment with the two valves. I try um, not to touch them for now. In between you can see the RF choke. There you go. It looks um, very clean and uh, unabused really. So um, first look, not too bad, not too bad. These are the tuning capacitors. They sit here. Always take a close look if there's any sign of arcing or burning or Sometimes these veins um, even melt together. I've seen it all, folks. I've seen it all. But this one is in very good nick, all in all. Everything is clean. It's dust-free. So I'm happy with the purchase. I paid, uh, on this instance, £40 pounds for it. Um, the seller said there might be a fault. I haven't powered it up yet. Um, after my pre-inspection, I will go ahead and do that. Let's talk f about these valves for a bit. Uh, they are General Electric, I believe, uh, 6146Bs. And uh, we do sell them in, in se second hand. And even if they're 40 years old, they still push out 50 watts each in most cases. Um, if the transceiver is being tuned quickly and efficiently, there's no reason why these, why, uh, why these valves uh, would fail. However, if they do, um, we sell them used, as I said. And uh, but there's plenty of Chinese sellers uh, who are happy to supply you with some valves. We bought a few of these over the years directly from China and uh, none of them has ever failed. There's a lot of crap going around on, on, uh, on the internet basically saying anything that comes out of China is, is rubbish. Um, I'm afraid that's not the case anymore. China is just the place where stuff is being made these days. I hope this was useful, guys. Um, as with anything else, when you buy something you um, are used, check for the physical appearance first and uh, you can tell right away if a piece of equipment has been well cared for or not. Um, if it stings of nicotine, stay away. You end up with a rig that needs cleaning beyond belief and uh, any dents, stay away. And uh, as I said before, if it needs to be shipped, make sure the seller takes the feet off and packs it appropriately. Although they are over 20 kilos in, in weight, um, without the original box and polystyrene um, inserts, I would not get this shipped. Full stop. All right, let me know in the, in the comments down below if you uh, want to buy one of these, and, uh, or maybe you have one of these, and tell me your experience with it. Um, I'm, quite f I'm quite fond of them, and uh, I'm in the process of moving Shaq, and my aim uh, will be to get a full lineup. Um, Oh yeah, on a further note, if you have a choice between a FT101ZD or 90, 901, 902, I would always go for the 9 series. The, uh, it's fairly modular and much, much easier um, to maintain and uh, repair. Okay, as ever, thanks so much for watching. Um, check out my other videos, subscribe, um, click the little bell thingy, and uh, I'll see you at the next one. Bye. Oh, one more thing. This transceiver you just saw, brilliant, works fine.